So, what if we have secondary and tertiary amines? Well, fun fact. One, we are not going to make really complicated ones. The most complicated, complicated one we're talking about are amines, which is going to be a different video. But when we're naming these amines here, we're going to keep it simple. These are simple, simply alkyl amines. Now, why are we doing this? One, okay, we're going to keep it simple because like, there's no need to make it complicated. Again, we're kind of framing more towards amino acids and peptides. It's got a different naming system. The second is, in my opinion, more of a practical issue. I have multiple copies of Carey's book. I've read multiple chemistry books online, turns the chemistry Libra text and things like that. And by golly, they are super inconsistent about how you name these. In fact, fun fact, when I was prepping for this course, I couldn't use your textbook. It had so many cases missing. I had to go look at the chemistry 132 notes, which is basically organic for like people who don't need chemistry. And it gave a much better explanation on how to do this. So I'm going to teach you the end naming system. That said, do not be surprised if you see books give these things different names. I Even within the Cary textbook itself between versions, it's very inconsistent. So just a quick refresher. Your primary amines are ones that contain one alkyl group hemming off the nitrogen. So let's consider something simple. And I'm gonna give just these two primary amines. So here we have an ethyl amine and a methyl amine. Now we're going to use the YL. We're going to use the alkyl amine naming system. So all of these are going to finish with YL amine. Now if it was just this branch and just this branch, we would call this ethyl amine. Methylamine. So what happens when we put an additional alkyl branch off of this? So let's just put a methyl on both. Well, here's a few things. First of all, we're not going to arrange it by alphabetical order. We're going to list the groups by how long the carbon chain is. So methyl, even though alphabetically it comes after ethyl, because methyl is the shortest, we're going to have the methyl. The other thing is that we're going to use a big N dash. So N dash methyl ethylamine. And this N here means that this methyl group is attached to the nitrogen. In this case, we have two, so this would be N diethylamine. Now, let's say we attach rid of our hydrogens and we decide we want to do a tertiary. And in this case, I want to do something like a propyl group. So how does this change the naming? Well, instead of having one N, we're going to have two. But again, we need to write the groups out in terms of the number of carbons. Now, with this purple group, we're not attached to the first carbon. So we have two options. We can either call it by a non IUPAC name, which is acceptable, like isopropyl, or we can specify the number of position, which is what I'm going to advocate for you. So in terms of increasing length, we've got a methyl, ethyl, two propyl, amine, and this would be N-N-methyl. In this case, we have an NN dimethyl 2 propyl amine. And again, the 2 here is not referring to where the amine, well, actually, it is. It's referring to where the amine attaches to the carbons in this chain. So, this is the N naming system for defining naming secondary and tertiary amines. And again, we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to do cycle groups. We're not going to do substituents on these until we start talking about amines. And that's a whole different system. But the thing is, we're going to keep it simple. Your ends here designate the number beyond um, primary. So if you have one N, it's a secondary amine. If you've got two, it's a tertiary amine. We're going to arrange the names of the different alkyl groups, not by their alphabetical order, but by the number of carbons in the compound. And if the amine does not attach to an N carbon within that chain, we need to specify the position of the amine in that chain. Now, again, you're going to see a lot of different names for these amines. Even the textbook itself is not consistent in this regard. So where well, this is going to be the system I use, but you're definitely going to find other systems out there.